Okay, uh, welcome back to my new matplotlib tutorial. Um, in the last video I explained how you can uh, plot data with one-dimensional histograms. Now, and now I want to go one step further and explain how you can do similar things with two-dimensional histograms. And as you will see, it's very similar to the one-dimensional one. Uh, there's only some, some small things which you have to take into account. And uh, I would suggest that we, as usual, uh, directly dive into the topic. So we create a new Python file, which we call python6.py. And as usual, we import our uh, matplotlib uh, pyplot package uh, as plt. And since we need it later also, uh, we can directly import uh, numpy as np. Okay. Uh, and now in order to show you how such a two-dimensional histogram works, um, before we create any random data, I want to just create two lists. Um, one which I call, for example, x, and I write here three values inside, for example, one, two, three. And uh, then I create another list called y, uh, which I, uh, in which I put the values one, maybe five, three. Uh, <clears throat> and now, uh, we could plot this, of course, in the form of a graph, as I have done in my first video. But now I will show what happens when you create a two-dimensional histogram. So you can write plt.hist, and then you have to add 2D. And then you can just insert these two lists into that function as arguments, and then write plt show. And when you then run your code, uh, python3, python6.py, then you see here this very nice histogram now where you have bin data along the x-axis and the y-axis and the color axis uh, is basically the z-axis. Yeah? So um, th the color tells you how much entries you have in each two-dimensional bin. And uh, yeah, we have now here these three values inside. Uh, one is 1-1, one, one. this is here in the lower left corner. Then you have 2-5, uh, which is shown here. In the center and then you have 3-3 three, three, which is shown completely on the right side. Uh, so um, by this method you I think uh, get a very fast idea how these two-dimensional histograms are working. So now uh, I would like to go uh, one, one step further and um, create some random data in order to show what kind of things you can do with such a two-dimensional histogram. So you could for example write x equal np random normal and this creates a random distribution uh, normal distribution i'm usually using normal distributions uh, because first of all these distributions are somehow close to reality in some cases so you can basically simulate real data and secondly um, you can play around with this a lot and you can show several things with normal distributions so let's suppose we create a normal distribution with uh, a mean value of zero a standard deviation of one and an array with, let's suppose, 1 million. So we have to write here, these are 10,000, 100,000, 1 million. And then we can actually copy paste that and create another array uh, with the same amount of entries and the same uh, distribution. And now uh, we don't need to change anything. We can just run our script again. And then you see uh, very nicely uh, how the distribution in the histogram uh, looks like. And of course, uh, you cannot see so much. You can maybe estimate that this should be some kind of uh, normal distribution or Gaussian, but um, it's very difficult to identify because the number of bins is too small. And for that, we can use similar to the one-dimensional histogram, the spins argument. But of course, we have to now set the bins for the x and y direction <clears throat> in order to uh, get it to run. So we have to actually define here, uh, we, put, we have to put these two values in parentheses. And let's suppose um, we say bins should be 100, 100, which means 100 bins in x direction and 100 bins in y direction. And now when we plot this, now you can see that it looks uh, much better and you can really see a nice shape of our distribution. However, um, what I don't like in, in this uh, standard histogram is uh, the color axis. <clears throat> so basically, uh, it would be nice to have some kind of other format, uh, maybe rainbow colors. And this we can do with the help of so-called color maps. And in order to do that, we have to import another uh, package from uh, matplotlib. And this is uh, just called cm for color map. 
And then we can write as another argument here, cmap uh, equals cm dot. And then the name of the color axis, which I want to use is called gist underscore rainbow. And when I start this, then uh, it looks uh, really nice. Now um, the, the parts where there are no entries uh, is red and with the highest amount of entries is purple. And uh, yeah, uh, and then you have a kind of rainbow um, gradient inside. Um, of course, there are other color maps available. If you check the original documentation of PyPlot uh, or you just search in Google, you find many other alternatives, but I like rainbow uh, a lot because you can easily distinguish between the different values. And uh, one other thing which I would like to uh, to show is uh, how you can actually change the ranges. So now uh, the X and Y range is set automatically in the same way how it was done for a one dimensional histogram. And we can also adjust the range uh, with this argument range similar to the one dimensional histogram. But here, of course, we have to set the ranges for X and Y. So we have to, again, uh, create an array and then write this value in parentheses. So it will be, for example, minus two to two in X direction and minus two to two in Y direction. And when we run this then now, you can easily uh, see that uh, the, it, the, the ranges have changed and you can identify some parts better. So the color axis uh, and the set values are also automatically adjusted according to the range that we set. But of course, it would be also maybe nice to see uh, what kind of values we have. So which color corresponds to which value. So in order to do that, uh, we just put a few more things to our histogram. So one is as usual the title. Um, so we maybe just call it example 2D histogram. And then we can also put an X label as usual. And we can write here maybe just uh, X values. And we can also put a Y label. And this we can then call, uh, sorry, Y values. And uh, when we want to see the color bar, we can actually write here plt.color bar. And uh, then we run this. And yeah, now we can see on the right side here the color bar. So we see that. Uh, Values in between 100 and 150 are shown in green color. Uh, values be below 50 are red and values above 250 are purple here in the center. Yeah. So this works also quite well. Of course, we can also label the set axis. And this we can do by writing here uh, inside the argument label. And let's suppose, uh, as usual, we just call it entry. So now it looks uh, it looks quite nice. And you have a quite neat and clean two-dimensional histogram. And uh, yeah, since we have now a normal distribution, uh, as I said, we can show many things with that. And one of the nice things which you can show is um, when you plot the histogram in the logarithmic form. So now we can use this argument norm. And uh, from for that purpose, we have to, because we want to show uh, not the x and y axis in the logarithmic form, but the z axis. So we have to adjust the colors according to that. And due to this reason, we have to import another package, which is called also implemented in uh, uh, matplotlib. And this is called um, colors. So now we have to write here norm equals uh, colors dot lock norm. Now, now it adjusts the colors according to um, according to the logarithmic uh, way of plotting it. And when you do that, then uh, yeah, it looks uh, yeah, it looks quite nice. So we have a few values here uh, which are quite small so this is somewhere around one and uh, here these values are quite large much larger than at least 100 and uh, yeah then you can uh, now easily identify uh, maybe in a, in a better way than before where the different uh, values are and how the shape of your distribution is and so on yeah? so i guess this is um well, these are all the important things which i want to show uh, this time i hope you uh, you learned something um and uh yeah if you want to continue with that or have some other ideas please put it in the comment section uh, i will try to consider all of that and um yeah, if you like the video, then uh, yeah, please uh, hit the like button. Please um, subscribe if you have not done so far and stay tuned until my next video will come hopefully very soon. See you.